All right, what's going on, BE3? Jeff Beggins here and Adrian Dosses. Adrian Dosses is standing, and we're doing something cool. We were telling you about last week is we're bringing in some of our badass agents that are doing really cool things that we believe are going to bring value to you to help your business grow. And so that's kind of what we're doing. It's a little bit more entertaining than Mike Puma today. So we'll Just see how little. that works. <laughs> Just a little. All right. So here's what we're going to talk about today: is is how well do you and do you kind of know your market. So I'm going to start really, really baseline on this one. Mm -hmm. And so what did you do before real estate? How long have you been in the business and kind of what brought you to the, to this, to this industry? Well, I've been in business. I've been here in Florida for six years. Um, during that time I've been doing vacation rentals mostly, but the past two years is real estate. Uh, before that I was an architect for commercial structures. Okay. And you've been very well educated over the years. You've got, mm -hmm. we were talking about your degrees and everything earlier. What do you have? How many, one, two, three, how many degrees do you have now? Three. So two bachelors and a master's. Two bachelors, master's degree, <laughs> architecture experience, vacation rental experience. And then two years ago, you came to us and got your license and started selling. Correct. Right. And so it's been a really cool ride and it, it's, it's kind of fun. So those of you who've been watching know kind of how we roll the way we think. And Adrian, you know clearly how we roll on right. this one. And it all starts out with what are you doing this for? Like what is the, what's the why? What's, what's the reason? So for those watching, it has to start with this because what are we doing this for? You've been, you're in a good position. You've worked really hard. You've done very well. You're not in a, a hole with debt. You're got to, you live on the beach. Of course, we've got the beach style going on here today and on purpose, which you'll see in a, in a few. Um, but it's about lifestyle, mm -hmm. right? And you move to the beach right. to live a beach lifestyle. Do it and right. We got her out of the beach into Tampa, the studio here. So she's kind of right. shaking being off the beaches for a little bit, which is kind of opposite of what you're allowed to be doing. Yeah. <laughs> right? But you moved. So what was it that attracted you to that lifestyle? Because I think it's relevant to what we're talking about today. Uh, the lifestyle of the beach is just... Um appreciating the small moments wake you know having a beautiful sunset each one's different every night um having the access to everything and walking distance um the group group of people that i'm around love them everybody has good story um but yeah it's kind of simplicity Sim simplicity and happiness so mm -hmm. and all we sell i don't care if you're in chicago or la or laguna beach or indian rocks beach or tampa we sell lifestyles, right? We're basically right. lifestyle consultants. We're lifestyle advisors. We are um, the trusted advisors to help them. I mean, we don't sell cheap things. No. And it's a big investment that, that people have. So what we were doing from a lifestyle perspective with Adrian is saying, okay, what do you want? What is the next level of Adrian? Mm -hmm. And for you, it's not crazy at all. No. It's we've got a, a normal goal and we kind of chunk it down to a, a quarter by quarter basis. So just for those watching, let's kind of go through what it is. So what the income goal on a quarterly basis for you for a simple, happy lifestyle is what? Quarterly, 30, 40. About 30 grand, 40 grand a quarter. Mm -hmm. um, puts a big ass smile on your face. It lets you keep the, the beach lifestyle going. Still realistic. Still realistic, which lets you have some time because you don't want to go full throttle. You can make no. 100, 200 grand a quarter if you wanted to. Right. But you like to go hang out. You could see your tan. Right. <laughs> she likes to hang out and enjoy the beach lifestyle. So. That's the lifestyle balance that we look for is okay. what do you actually want? So with 30 grand, that's kind of where I step in and say, okay, we're business partners in this mm -hmm. whole thing. So my job is to help you get 30 grand, 40 grand a quarter. Let's we'll stay with 30. And that's a big chunk. So mm -hmm. we, let's divide that quarter into three and it's 10,000 bucks a month. Right. Right. The average check is greater than this, but for simplicity, we always say it's worth five grand. Mm -hmm. Right. So you need, to, you need two deals a month. So now this steps in and say, okay, so we're going to do two deals a month. And there's a couple different ways we can do this. Now you've been around enough. It's only been a couple years, but what sources of business have you seen work for people? Um, the farming. And Fizbo's. Fizbo's. And the expireds and the door knocks and be hanging out at bars and walking at Home Depot and walking your dog and walking on the, everything's working, mm -hmm. right? So we have decisions from a business partnership here um, with my job is to help her reach her goals and saying, okay, what's the path of least resistance? So you've kind of chosen one. Mm -hmm. We kind of just, we looked at all the different options, your personality styles, what you actually want to accomplish. Right. And you could have done a path. We could make you a FISBO master. 
We can make you an expired master. We can make you a door knocking master. We can make you a new home building master. We can make you a retirement home specialist. You can make you a first time home buyer specialist. Make you retirement. Make you an investment property. Make you a downtown specialist. You you have every option and the ability to create whatever you want. So, what was the niche that we kind of came up with would be good for you? Uh, going off of vacation rentals, short term in Indian Rocks Beach. Okay, now watch how this, how this chunked down. This went from vacation rentals, right, investment properties in one town. Mm -hmm. right? Now, this is critical. That's only two and a half miles long. Two and a half miles long. And we joke a lot about it. I said, sell your car yeah. because you're not allowed to leave the island. Right? Right. When, you're, when your car or golf guy, we're joking, and I'm not joking still. We're going to be called it. She's dubbed as the queen of Indian Rocks Beach, the queen of IRB. It's still being designed, my golf cart. So she could, should sell her car buy a golf cart and make sure that if it passes 27th Avenue, it turns off. Mm -hmm. And if it passes right, Whitehurst Street, it turns off. And if you go over the intercoastal bridge, you can't get on the other side. Right. So that's what I've been always saying. Do not leave this town because you could leave this town, mm -hmm. but why the hell would you? Because have no need. Grocery store. There's Amen. enough business and you have shipped. I like can deliver the groceries to you anyway, yeah, or Uber Eats. Or whatever, or Uber Eats. <laughs> so now you have no reason. So sell your car. So now you have an Adrian selling her car, getting a golf cart, and leaving the beach. But this is by design because it's a lifestyle choice. Right. And it's for you to do things. And it becomes a total niche. And we always talk about the niche. So what there's what is the benefit by focusing on something? Now, if you're watching and you're in Atlanta, right, this could be one corner of Buckhead, right? You have to get so niche down to something simple. For what reason? What are the benefits of working just one specific niche, like a two and a half mile long niche? People know that if anything has to deal with real estate, they come to me, whether it be real estate or um, vacation rentals. I'm their point of contact. In that town. In that town. And then if they need something in Tampa, I'll direct them. But they trust me to be able to deliver them the right person. Okay. Let me dig into that one for a second because this is really important because. Her niche is a two and a half mile long town, and she knows everything about that specific town. We were talking before we went live here. Mm -hmm. If I said, Jonathan's looking to buy something in Indian Rocks Beach, there's a house on Harbor Drive North, and there's a house in La Hacienda, right? Would, can you please talk about the pros and cons of Harbor Drive North versus La Hacienda, and where would be a better place for him to live with his uh, two-year-old daughter and his soon-to-be-born daughter and the lifestyle that he wants to do, right? <laughs> now. Could you answer that question? Definitely. And you could totally answer that question. I could tell him what street that he needs to be living on. And which side of the street. You got it. And the pros and the cons on mm -hmm. this side of the street versus this side of the street. Right. And where the sun exposure is, where the fetch of the wind is, what gets colder in the winter, where the breeze comes from. Where's the park at for the kids. Where's the where's park, the, all that stuff, and which one access. is it. Now, this is critical because she knows her niche. But now, if I said, now we're in South Tampa right now, and if I said there's a, there's a, a over on... Up on Neptune, there's one, and there's over one on uh, El Prado. There's a different house. Which house do you think he should work as far as lifestyle goes for his family? I couldn't give him an answer on that. Right? Couldn't give an answer. But, <laughs> an well, honest, but here's the problem. I you, could fake it, but I wouldn't look intelligent at all. During all right. That. So let's, let's expose the fakeness for a second, because this is what most agents um, do, because we are get trapped in doing transactions rather than building a business. What you're doing right. and why you're here today is I want to highlight and expose the fact of how building a business really does work from a simplicity standpoint. Mm -hmm. You could sell him something here in El Prado in South Tampa, but when you start to talk about that town or that street, mm -hmm. you're going to be making shit up. Right. And he's going to sense that you're making it up. And how is he going to know that you're making things up? You're going to fidget. Right? These are all subconscious clues. You're going to be scratching your head. Mm -hmm. You're going to be talking with an upswing. You're not going to be looking directly in his eyes. You're no. going to be saying, yeah, there's a really nice dog park, right? And it's a cool school district and you can walk to shops and there's a coffee shop, right? You're going to say all that stuff thinking it's probably true. But as a buyer, what vibe is he going to get from you on that one? He's, going to, he's not going to trust me. No. And he's not blatantly going to say, liar. <laughs> no, he's going to say, Hey, you know what? It was so nice, nice meeting you. I got an appointment, you. and yep. I'll give you a call later. Give me your card, and he's gonna poop later. and vanish on you. And you're ghost, gone. bye. So he's ghost, <laughs> right? But if we ask the questions about these two streets specifically in Indian Rocks Beach, you're gonna say, "Oh, 
cool question. In fact, I know Bob and Mary that live across the street from that house, mm -hmm. and there's a cool little dog park right across the street, and you walk through this park, and it's through mangrove tunnels, and you walk down this really cool pathway, and you're going to say it with passion and intensity and competence and confidence that the tonality that comes from your voice and your eye contact and just your physical posture is going to, he's going to say, you know what you're talking about. I'm so glad I found you. Trust. Trust, right? Because you can't fake trust. You can't fake the vibe. But the mm -hmm. moment you go to try to sell something in North Tampa as a townhouse, you're going to become uncertain and you're going to do it. Now, unfortunately, the general public has become numb because that's the way they're normally treated by the real estate population Unfortunately, because the answer is, can you do something in North Tampa? Yep. Can you do something in Sarasota? Sure can. Right. Are you good at vacation rentals in Clearwater Beach? Mm -hmm. How about St. Pete? You got it. Right. And they're inside. They're going, you're so full of crap, yeah. but they have no choice. So they work with you because they liked you and you're the best choice that they have, mm -hmm. which kind of goes through specialties for a second. So we joke a lot and talk about the differences in, in, in specialties. So the example we use a lot is let's go out of the industry for a second from a doctor, mm -hmm. right? If you want to go see the general practitioner, family practice doctor, mm -hmm. what do you expect him to be able to do for you? A little bit of everything. Right. And just general the kind knowledge. of, Hey, let me see your elbow. That looks pretty good. And show your shoulder. Let's see what's going on. Open up. Ah, let's take a look at your eyes and your ears. They can do the normal stuff, right? They, but when you start saying, I've got an interesting click in my left toe, right? And it really hurts. You're getting out of his expertise now. Correct. Right? And he should say what? I'll send you to a specialist. Okay. And do you appreciate that? When he says that? <laughs> Most people don't think about this, but when they, if you have the opportunity and your general practitioner is saying, hey, you know what? Lay down there. I'm going to grab this knife and I'm going to start operating on your toe. You're going to say, wait a second are you really good at toes? And he's going to say, of course I am. Yeah. Of course, have a seat. You're all good. That's the problem. And, and agents in, in this market say, sure, I can do Tampa. Oh, a Buckhead? Yeah, I got you. No problem. South Carolina over on the beaches, I'm really good over there too. And you can do it because you can open up the MLS and show them houses, but that's not what we have. So what level of care do you think it takes to really get good at a niche? How big do you think your niche could be and to really be good from your perspective? Uh, for example, well, with my niche, I'm very passionate about and I'm involved with all the time, every day. Uh, lately, I'm on the, I just got on the plan and zoning board uh, and getting active with the community so they have that trust factor. So not only am I a resident, but I'm involved with government activities on making the town a better place. And that ups your street cred for sure. Definitely which is what it's about. So the guy flies in from Chicago, lands in there and says, hey, what's going on in town? You say, let me tell you exactly what's going on in town. I was at the planning and zoning board last night and a new proposed project is coming in and it's going to change things mm -hmm. for the better and here's why. They're like, God, I'm so glad we found her. And especially in my niche, a lot of it's all word of mouth. None of it goes on the L Not a lot of properties do go on MLS um, just because it is uh, very hectic. Once it does go on Zillow, <laughs> or MLS, right. it's or even coming soon signs because it's a it's a small niche that people want to actually actually be in. Right. So, talk about from an investment standpoint, mm -hmm. okay? Because all different markets, you have different segments in the market. I was talking to a group here in Tampa this morning that they have a new townhouse project that we're just finishing right here in town. And the buyer's agent is saying, hey, my buyers want to buy this and they want to put it on um, VRBO and Airbnb, mm -hmm. right? And so go ahead and do it. So that creates a whole different can of worms, mm -hmm. if, especially if you're doing general practitioner type work. How, are, how would a, an agent from Orlando who has a client that wants a condo or a little beach house supposed to know the intricacies of the law? about little things such as renting and those type of things for their legality. What kind of exposure could you have for, for things like that? Mm -hmm. They wouldn't technically know even if it's allowed first. And how much liability are they opening themselves up? To? Oh, huge. That's the issue. I was talking with one of our attorneys today huge. too. Because to rent, let's take this for example, because you know this. Uh -huh. If 
Jonathan bought a house in Indian Rocks Beach and he wanted to rent it out. Could he? Yes. Are there things he has to do to do it legally? Oh, definitely. Yes. Okay. It's an order. It's uh, you have to have a business license. You have to have a plaque out front. Um, there's and what has to be said on the plaque out front? Your telephone number uh, for any emergency respond responding yeah. issues and stuff like that. You got to register it. You got to pay your taxes. You got to pay your the fees. business. Yeah. You got to be as a business in town, mm -hmm. hotel, motel, license, all kinds of things to do it right. You got to get certain insurance for it. Now here's the danger. Somebody who strolls in from out of town and Jonathan sees their for sale by owner sign and he buys their house mm -hmm. and he starts putting on BRBO. He's got so much exposure in the whole thing mm -hmm. and they, they fell prey to things that they didn't know because they didn't have somebody that had the local knowledge on it. Mm -hmm. And I think it's really important. I think the context here is to do it, not just in Indian Rocks Beach is a great example, but this is exactly the same as Tampa's too big of a niche, mm -hmm. right? South Tampa's too big of a niche, right? Palmasia is a niche, right? Bayshore Beautiful is a niche. That's, that would be just like Indian Rocks or Bellar Beach or Bellar Shores or Reddington Beach or North Reddington Shores or Atlanta or some little section of Chicago, right? Mm -hmm. So that's, that's the whole point on this one. So. What else? So what are the, some of the other details from that we can actually do? Because we wrote down the establishing trust when you were talking about what your biggest goals were. Mm -hmm. And it was clearly not money because that's not what no. you're over here. You're for here for a lifestyle. Correct. So what does establishing trust mean to you? Um, getting to understand um, the other person first is pretty What's, important. How do you do that? I'm getting to know a little bit more about them, uh, spend some time and see what their interests, what their, um, where they're coming from, their perspective, what they're looking for, um, what are their needs. Um, actually just listening. Not a lot of agents know how to listen to clients. They're trying to show off rather than, you know, be compassionate at times. We have a lot of duties as real estate agents. And one of the most important things is listening. And you said the interesting thing about that. So listening is key because they tell you everything. Yes. If you listen. And I don't think enough people do it. So one of the things that I know we work on a lot from inside of a company is how important is your ability to determine whether their personality style, the, the D's, the I's, the S's, or their C's. And mm -hmm. right? does that change the way you approach your interaction? Definitely. With them? Whether it be an emoji on the text message or just, you know, period after each sentence. You know, I know what type of person, you know the different personalities even through a text message or even if they do text. So for, for example on that one, because I want to really drive this point home on this one. So if you opened up your text messaging real quick and mm -hmm. going back through one of your, your most recent ones. Um, da, 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 da. This one, the last one here is looking. Hey, um, snap me a picture of this, okay? Mm -hmm. What kind of just representational system are that, is that person in right now? Oh, they're visual. Totally visual. So we know enough to go into neutral to say, okay, well, how are they going to talk to me? And now I'm going to talk back the same way in mm -hmm. their same word. This was not an emoji person. This is somebody that's in visual mode. It's a high D visual because I know the person that just sent me that text message there. So in order to respond back, if I start doing emojis and start talking about touchy feely things, mm -hmm. I just blew all credibility and, and it, there's a weird feeling on there. Mm -hmm. So when, how do you determine when can you start to tell the, about the people that are reaching out to you? When do you start kind of, let me use the word judging or categorizing them is probably a better way to say it. I'd say the first two minutes of speaking with someone. Of, of speaking with them. Before mm -hmm. you even start speaking with them, you have some interactions, whether it comes in a, a voicemail or a text or a lead router or, or leads that are coming to you. Correct. So do you start looking right then? Yeah. I mean, um, I, I try to tailor my communication to their way of thinking, um, especially because I'm a visual person. I have to see things on paper in order to understand it. And sometimes I try to achieve the communication in multiple ways, not only visual, but, you know, other methods. And this is a, a tough thing because you've got, you're a, an eye personality and yes. you're very visual. Yes. Okay. Which is very common in this industry. I see blend. What's that? I see you're blend. I see blend. So you're very mm -hmm. eye analytical, which is an interesting combination mm -hmm. that's not out there, which is why you had a, a very successful past there too. So you're fun, but analytical all at the mm -hmm. same time, which is great. But that is going to really conflict with high D type personalities, oh, yeah. right? 
and your high like your you can run over a little bit. Yeah, like my dad. <laughs> Well, you'll be complimentary to him on a couple of yes. things too, but the eye part will drive him crazy. Uh -huh. So she, Adrian, has to tone down the island girl beach mode, or does she? And that's a, that's one of the points I want to drive through today because this isn't, I don't want this to sound bad. Her goal is to find two people a month. Mm -hmm. There's 30 days in an average month. So we're talking about two a month. So there's 28 days she could be hanging out on the beach or just kind of doing it. We got to have two deals go on paper every single month to get through to go close for you. Right. Mm -hmm. So the pressure is kind of off. So what she can do, you've got a, a very nice luxury of being able to pick and choose and attract and repel. Mm -hmm. So if the, the reality of it is that when you talk to people, if they're not like you or you don't really like them, you have a choice to make. Right. What are your choices? I don't have to work with them. And you sell them out. You could sell them. I could say I got a better person that would, you would click well with. Let me introduce you to them. Okay. And I'm sure the person, the other person would refer them to me, you know, if they had another client. That's, that's the real trust. Point. And this goes trust. back to the trust and the self-awareness to know what you, what you really are. Being honest with yourself, you know. Because you're not going to deliver that yeah. the best experience to them on that one. So you're going to get the clues right away from the text messages, the phone calls, the emails that come in when they first starts to reach you. Mm -hmm. Now, most of your business now is referral based and it comes through people right. that you know, right? which is providing a pretty decent lifestyle. Now, knowing about the niche that you have, do you think that you could, how could you get bigger or stronger in your niche if you wanted to? How would you take more market share in this one specific niche? Um, right now I'm trying to gain a bigger foundation or grow a stronger foundation. What does that mean to you? Uh, for me, it's more exposure to people in the area, okay. um, reaching outside the box a little bit. What does that mean? Uh, well, there's not too many people that actually live full time in Indian Rocks Beach. Okay. So with the tourism, reaching out to these people that are new in the area, that are visiting, that know nothing about Indian Rocks Beach, and being their point of contact for the area. Okay. The whole area, because what most people don't Correct. understand about the market that you're in right there is we've got 17 miles of beautiful beaches mm -hmm. and 19 different beach towns mm -hmm. and you're really zeroing in on one. Mm -hmm. So, but you know enough to know to talk high level about all of them and you could talk about the pros and cons of the different neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. And if you get to know them and actually understand their lifestyle and what they're actually looking for, you can kind of guide them to their top couple, mm -hmm. right? And help them through. Like you could sell Madeira Beach if you needed to. Oh, yeah. Right? But you prefer and you're better at Indian Rocks Beach. You couldn't tell me the same level of passion and commitment and knowledge, the difference between Vivian Drive and Boca Siega Avenue mm -hmm. and Madeira Beach. You'd fake it and I'd know it because you don't really know. But Indian Rocks Beach, you know it. So to that, if you want to get really, really, really niche, and you have the luxury to be able to do this, if you can just go out and say, I'm me, I'm Adrian, this is how I dress, this is how I am, this is how I roll, this is my attitude, this is my energy, and if you don't like it, roll on down the beach. Yeah. Right, which is a pretty cool option, okay? Mm -hmm. Or she has the skills to be able to go into neutral to relate to everybody she wants to, mm -hmm. but the reality of it is your choices of lifestyle don't cause that to become necessary. Right. Now, anytime you want to, next quarter, you can say, you know what? I want to put away an extra 250 grand next year so I can buy a couple of extra duplexes myself. Mm -hmm. Right. And then she can go full throttle. And then the market and the business plan changes a little bit because now you can't really afford to be super choosy mm -hmm. because you need to make more cash. Mm -hmm. So, but you know, to be able to start reaching out to these people and say, okay, Hmm. I've got a super high S, right? That is very kinesthetic, mm -hmm. right? So to you, you're going to have to go into neutral and really change your personality. Mm -hmm. And you're not, not your personality, your, your method of delivery right. to that person. You're going to have to slow down. You're going to have to tone it down. And you're going to have to change the way you talk and change the way you act and change the way you describe everything, mm -hmm. right? True? True. If you want to deliver that, that experience to that high S personality that's very kinesthetic, completely opposite of you. Mm -hmm. But you could do it. Oh, yeah. And you could do it well, but you don't have to. No. That's the beautiful part about niching down 
that you can niche up whenever time you wanted to or needed to and niche back down. Mm -hmm. That's why every quarter, do we not hound you every single quarter? Yes. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> What is your art of life betterment? What is yes. your goal? What is your personality style? How much money do you want to make? How much do you want us to kick your ass in the course of a quarter, leave you alone, or talk to you every week, whatever it is that you want to do? And it's changed my life, too, in the way I, you know, view things also. I mean, I, I take it in many different aspects of kind of rerouting everything and your whole entire way of living. You not know, just your business. At, not just your business. How does some of that change? Um, personality styles. What are you saying, John? So, what do you so personally speaking to people? The, let's talk DISC for a second. It's kind of mm -hmm. going off a niche for a second. Does that change your interpersonal relationships? Yes. With people too. How quickly are you able to figure out who you're dealing with, even on a personal or business relationship? Pretty quickly. Yeah. I mean... Right. Like, if somebody walked through that door right now, you'd pretty much be able to prejudge them not that that's nice to do that's not nice yeah. but you but you do it every single time we yes always, we always remind it takes about seven seconds to do it so what is the what's the best advice you have to somebody who knows this because we're not saying things that you don't know but for those who really haven't niched the way that they should what are the benefits of doing it if you're just talking to to the agents right now saying this is what you should do it and why um i'd say it's a passion and a commitment um, not only to make sure that the people that are trying to buy in your neighborhood, you know that they'll be pleased in that area and the same going out. Um, it's a lifestyle. It's, it, you just, it just depends on what you want and how you want to live. Uh, I mean, it's. Well, to an agent watching to that an agent, is in. A small section of Ocala. You got to be able to answer these questions fast too. When your client is wondering with the rentals issues or any kind of politics going on, you got to be able to respond quickly and confidently. Um, Why? Trust issue. You know, gaining the trust of your client. How many? How many of you watching have a total BS detector? Right. Every one of us has it. And what sets it off? If you want to think, think about it for a second, you can think about people you've dealt with probably recently mm -hmm. and you had a total bullshit detector went off in your head and you're like, ah, totally made that up. 100% made that up. I see it every day. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> so what do you notice though? What, what do you think gives it away? Um, the fumbling, the... And comments, too, for the, those watching. I want to see what your comments are on this one. Fumbling, bumbling, uh, um, uh, 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 thinking, <laughs> upswings, downswings, the little social cues, the touching, uh -huh. pigeon, and doing the whole thing. It's all subconscious. It's all below the normal level of consciousness and an energy level that sends off the vibe that you don't know what the hell you're talking about. Mm -hmm. And it 100% is, is, is reached. It's 100% achieved. They want. They absolutely know it right away. Mm -hmm. So you are 100% screwing yourself if you are an agent that tries to take somebody into a market that you are not passionately knowledgeable about, and you're screwing it up for the rest of the industry because you're making that okay. And I don't think that's okay. You are so much better off for somebody who comes in and says, "Hey, do you want? I want to go look in South Tampa to pick up a condo in Harbor Island." You are so much better off referring that over to somebody over in a Tampa office that really knows Harbor Island the way you know Indian Rocks. Mm -hmm. An agent in Tampa who's sending somebody over to buy a beach investment on the beaches is dumb to try to take them over to the beach to try to gather the knowledge that you've crammed into your head mm -hmm. right over the last six years. It's just impossible. Now they could say, oh, this is a 3-2 and it's 2,700 square feet. It's this much on the water and it's 828,000. That's easy to do. But guys, that's not a value anymore because that's on Zillow. Mm -hmm. Right, and they already know that stuff. What they don't know is what is the rental restriction? Where is the park? What are the amenities? What would I write in my VRBO description to say that this is a more attractive place to book rather than the one down the street? Mm -hmm. Right, what do I get to say? Do I get to see sunrise? Do I get to see sunset? What is that seawall condition? What is going on with the city? What's going on with development? What's happening here and there? And that's the value that, that you need to bring. And it, mm -hmm. if you're 
in a town that's more than five minutes away from where you're selling, you don't know enough to really do a great job. Right. Right. You're trying to operate on the toe, which is going to screw you over. You are so much better off sending that to somebody who works Harbor Island mm -hmm. and taking a $2,000 referral check rather than you driving your butt over there to him and ha and um and, and scratch your head and freak out and send out the vibe that you don't know what the hell you're doing because you ruined the experience for the customer. Right? You didn't do a good job. You don't really know the values and you wasted your time. And mm -hmm. you're probably going to blow the deal because somewhere on the line they're going to call you out as a fraud right. for trying to pretend that you know shit that you don't know anything about and they're going to bolt on you and ghost and now you wasted two weekends of your life and you got no money versus saying, hey, you know what? That toe is not my specialty, but that is the best toe doctor in the planet and I'm going to send you over to the toe man. You're right? podiatrist? But, whatever. <laughs> I like the toe man. It sounds better. But that's the point. I want to make sure that's one of the points we really drill down is it's the simplest way to build a business. Right. Okay. Now let's draw the distinction too. Let's say something happened and you needed to pull in 25 grand in the next month. Could you do it? Yes. Yes. And if you had to do this, you would do whatever you had to do to go make that money. Yes. Now that would be doing transactions. So that would require, you might take somebody to Tampa. You might take, take somebody into St. Pete, you might do all that because you're in a, a more of a desperate situation to do it. Now people will sense that and you won't give a good experience, but you will get transactions done, mm -hmm. right? So I think that th there's also been an evolution in you to transition between doing deals mm -hmm. and building a business. Now we're having a conversation today about building a business. So to become the queen of IRB, like she's going to walk around with lays on every day with beach dresses and soon in a golf cart. And that's it. That's her brand. That's her style. She is the beach chick. She's the queen of IRB, whatever the name ends up being. But that is going to be her niche, her brand, her image, her style. And that's what that means. Now, if that beach girl walks onto Harbor Island, you're going to look like a moron, right? Because you don't fit into that tribe. Oh, I don't fit into Tampa right now. <laughs> right? She's freaking <laughs> out being in this office. But you get the point, right? And if somebody scrolls over to the beach. And I admit it. You know? But you're self-aware enough to know that that's the right thing. Right. But somebody walks over totally dressed in, in the way that they are in downtown Tampa and tries to walk on the beach in their heels, it's not going to look authentic. Yeah. And the vibe is not going to be there, and they're going to sense the fraudulent activity, and they're going to bolt. Right? Mm -hmm. And that's the key that it is. Because you've got the – so when it comes to building a business, you have to get niche. Now, to some people, the niche is social media. To some people, the niche is even nicher than that because it's social media just to your natural market, right? If you have 2,000 or 4,000 followers in a local geographic area, that's niche enough to just be working just to that tribe. But know that that tribe, depending on the DMA, the area that that tribe is in, you're going to be driving your butt to Tampa and the Seminole and Largo and all that. But that's a cool niche that you can help because maybe your niche isn't really a market knowledge, but it's representation for the buyer, mm -hmm. right? So you have all these different options is what you want to do. But what you're doing and what I want to serve as an inspiration to those that are watching is turning the page from just doing transactions to saying, wait a second, I have a life that I'm trying, I'm looking to design and it involves driving a new Audi, right? Yep. Q5 gray Q5. with what color leather tan, interior tan tan interior she knows what it's going to cost down she knows what it's going to be and so she's going to have her golf cart she's going to have the audi but that's the lifestyle and she's going to do what she needs to do to bring in that amount of money to fund that lifestyle now this is just for q2 now when we approach q3 we're going to reassess and say has life changed right mm -hmm. do you want to crank it up do you want to crank it down do you want to keep it the same do you want to keep are you good making 30 grand a quarter i love it keep doing what you're doing and then you might say i'm going to niche down right? Or I'm going to niche down to only waterfront houses that are three bedrooms and above, mm -hmm. right? It's talk about that. Is that a niche? That's a hell of a niche. Or it's golf front condos, right? right? Or it's large golf front mansions that you can rent out for 12 grand a night or a week, right? That's, that's, you can niche down your niche to as far as you could possibly be. And you become the superstar specialist doctor too. Mm -hmm. right? There are doctors that only specialize on one section of the body at one age range, right? And you don't get a whole lot more niche than that. So that's the beautiful part about this. And you can crank it up or crank it down however you want to go do. So social media, marketing, you have a two and a half mile long market. Mm -hmm. That is nicheable. That is targetable. And I think you've done a couple of interesting things because 
And this market's a resort market that you work on. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of the owners aren't there. Correct. So you want to niche down even more into that market. Mm -hmm. So you're going, how are you finding the people that don't live there? Uh, with the vacation rentals. Okay. So you're going through people who are marketing their vacation rentals because that's mm -hmm. their business to do it. Mm -hmm. There's also going through the websites and going through the public records. Mm -hmm. And you found a lot of people that live in the town you're in right now own places over there. So now you're kind of cross pollinating into the markets over here to reach these people. Right. So you can build the trust and credibility to guard their investments over there. Mm -hmm. One of the things I like that you're doing is you're not really asking anybody for anything. You're just no. saying, Hey, look, I'm here. You're not, you want me to go over and take a look at your pool? Give me a call. You want to see if your yard guy came, shoot me a text, right? I am your trusted advisor. I hear, I have your back. I'm there. Right. And it's asking them for nothing because your goals are not money driven. It's to establish trust, right? And to be happy and to have simplicity and be healthy and enjoy your life mm -hmm. and build your tribe with trust. Mm -hmm. So if you fast forward two years from now and there are ballpark, how many residences in that town? 4,000. 4,000 owners in an entire town. What if the goal was on a quarter by quarter basis, we're gonna reach and connect with 500 of them? Mm -hmm. Right. And then you can get that or a thousand of them a quarter. You can hit the whole town in a year. Mm -hmm. Right. And you said, I am going to stock a thousand people a quarter. That's 333 people a month. Right. Mm -hmm. That's 10 people a day. Right. Totally chunked down. Could you make it a point to reach out, introduce yourself and friend request or follow or LinkedIn or Google or email, send a postcard, knock on a door to 10 people a day. Mm -hmm. If that's what you wanted to do oh, now, now, your goals don't require that activity for this quarter, but if next quarter they did, that's how cool it is. Now, if you're watching from Atlanta, there's no way you're going to reach everybody in Atlanta. So you better knock down your tribe and your niche to an area of 4,000 people, right? If mm -hmm. you're going to do that now, could you geo target, right? Just that town. Yes. Here's the fun part too. When you target just that one town by zip code or actually the, the mapping features there. Anybody who's here from Toronto right now that happens to be in that town, is going to see your message. Mm -hmm. So could you build trust in that town and even more niche and saying, what are some other things you can do? How could you become the mayor or the ambassador of, of your niche in that marketplace? If I'm from Toronto and I wanted to find out where a coffee shop would be, I'm likely to go hit the Indian Rocks Beach Facebook page. Mm -hmm. Right. So could you, and I know you're starting to do this on there. Could you bring value to people who are following Indian Rocks Beach as a town mm -hmm. and you're posting a lot on the website and the pages already, but could you go over to Jonathan's coffee shop and say, Hey, I'm with Jonathan. He's the owner of Jonathan's coffee. Mm -hmm. If you haven't tried a special guacamole roast, you are missing out and tell me about mm -hmm. how you came up with this blend and where you're from and how'd you end this whole place. And then you, you, you did that video. What would that do to your street cred? for if you did that in a series of restaurants and shops and bars in that just that yeah. one town. Yeah, I could do that involvement where. Mm -hmm. What does Jonathan, the coffee maker now think about you? He knows that I have the tribe looking down at his coffee shop. Okay. And so he's likely to post that video to all the people that like his deal, mm -hmm. right? You're hashtagging using this video in the interact speech and all the types of things, a whole different conversation. But now you do that, and then you do it at the Mexican restaurant down the street, right. the Thai place around the corner, the florist, the bakery, all the different places and the bars and the restaurants and the shops. And before you know it, every time anybody's looking for anything in that town, you, you've commented on it. Mm -hmm. You own the owners, and the mm -hmm. owners love you, and they like mm -hmm. you because you're helping them build the business. You're not charging them a thing, but right. you're building your tribe. Right. Right. And the tribe is everybody who visits that town is looking at that page months before they come because they're dreaming about their trip. Mm -hmm. And then you're posting some content in there every once in a while. I said, you know, I've got, there are properties here. I'm standing in front of this one over on right, 10th Avenue that if you did this and you were to run some comps from the rental department, you're going to see that this property will cash flow. So you can have a property that you own here that we can make sure is managed properly for you that pays for itself. Mm -hmm. Right. So if you have a hundred grand sitting around not earning you much money, why don't we talk? Because I can get you into one of these pieces of property. And that just piece of content floats. Mm -hmm. And then people see it and then they reach out to you. And then you go through the tools like what we have 
you can do your property insights through your zap and all the different different aspects so when they're online searching for properties they see you're the person that's common on every single house for sale in that entire town before you know it you have totally infiltrated their mind mm -hmm. and there's nobody else in that town that will have even close to the amount of knowledge or street cred or trust built into right. deposited than you right. right and how all the stuff we just talked about how long would that take to do not very long at all not very long at all in a week yeah could you have those videos done i could have them done in a day if i wanted you could have them done in a day <laughs> right all of them so that's how niche i want you guys to do it i don't care if you're in kansas city right and take the neighborhood that you're talking about in kansas city and do the same thing but be self-aware enough to know that you cannot do the entire town you and your town's small mm -hmm. but normal towns are not that small but a neighborhood yeah. is perfect Right, mm -hmm. a district is cool. A school district is awesome. A, a subdivision is cool. And getting to know all the different people in the town, not just the mothers or you know the retirees. Getting involved, ask if they need help with anything. I mean, it's a lot more than just going to the bar and hanging out. And, yeah. How about the know, city works manager? The, right, volunteering the, on Saturdays on the A two K, knowing the schedule and what's going on in town. We got the biggest beach bash party April 27th this year um, that brings huge revenue and lots of people in town. So, you know, just having that resource. So one of the things I think is pretty cool, tell us about, so you've got this, you've got perfect idea. You've got an investor, right? Correct. Who you know that's actually an out-of-state, a very awesome investor mm -hmm. that owns a lot of properties in town mm -hmm. that doesn't ever live here. It has never actually been here. Never been to the state never even been to the state, but owns tens and tens and tens of properties mm -hmm. and multi-millions of dollars worth of, of investments, which mm -hmm. are investments. And so, and you've never physically met this person. No, I have a great time talking on the phone with them. How do you get trust from a testimonial standpoint? Of it, how, do, how would you get trust in somebody who's a multimillionaire mm -hmm. who owns a ton of assets, who's never met you and who's trusted you to take care of one of the larger financial assets, multiple of them actually, multiple, multiple. in ever. So how does that, how does that happen? Um, well, it first started on a phone conversation. Uh, he wanted to ask me a lot of questions about the area. What is my investment? What do I, you know, what's the value? What do I bring to the table with this that others don't have? And I expressed to him in this investment in Indian Rocks Beach, um, you have more value in these areas. So, and I'm helping him gain more value out of his investment with the exposure that I'm bringing it. And also being there for him for any questions, any emergencies I'm meeting over, um, making sure the inspection's gone right, making sure the permits are done complete because he's in California and his contractor's here. So there's he, he a lot bought a, of lack. Just for context, he bought a, a terribly ugly piece of property and he hired a contractor remotely to do mm -hmm. a full remodel. Didn't even know the contractor. Right. Because somebody told him that he should do this. And I think somebody gave him some advice that wasn't as sound as it could have been. No, because they're not there anymore with him. Right. No. And so, but he trusted, but he had no choice of who else to trust because there's no other options. Mm -hmm. So what I saw, because I was involved in this, in this con connection here, and I saw how you guys connected, and the trust was there. And what my dad says all the time, trust is the currency of the future. Yes. So for this guy who you've never met to say, here are my keys, here's my money, please have my back, right? Mm -hmm. And agency, how important is agency? And I know you talk about this a lot. So how do you simplify your ability to represent and have his back? How does that come up in conversations? Um, well, I explained to him with my background of architecture and construction, that I'm able to translate what's going on. Um, I create inspection reports, okay. uh, punch list, um, and he's there and he has my back also with anything that I need. So I just prove to him that I'm there and available and take care of what needs to be done because he needs to unload this property right now. Doesn't need to by Doesn't any stretch of the to, imagination, but really but wants to. Really wants to, yes. Because he's got other places he can deploy his capital, right? And that's that's the whole point. But I think that is a perfect example of trust because you never even met him. He, no. he talked with you on the phone. His he sister. He felt comfortable. You met his sister and you're like connected with her like amazingly. 
Yes, we do dinner yep. twice <laughs> when she's here each time. Each time we have twice. Yes. She likes guppies and salt rock. So right, and you know the people at guppies and salt rock. So you walk around as a local celebrity. Yep. You're on the planning and zoning board. You know the never need guys. reservations. They see me coming, and right. she's right there with me. But if you were to try to do that on a property up in Lando Lakes, oh gosh, no. you're dead. Right. So that's the point I want to drive home: is the credibility that came out in your voice, right? And the teamwork. It's a lot of teamwork between all three of us having that trust. Yep. And he knows that. Yeah. And they're not just hiring you too. He had a lot of trust in, in us as a, as a company Begging and having us. his back too. And so he knows, and I think you leverage that very well, that it's not just you mm -hmm. and it's totally, he's hiring us to have actually do that there. Yeah. What let's talk about this particular buyer. Cause very interesting um, person, very interesting person. What about him? Tell me about what was the personality styles? What, how did you know? Uh, well, he is, I guess he'd be a D. Yep. He's a D. Very D and a very C. Yes. So you've got a high D and you've got a high C, mm -hmm. right? To the point where he asks a lot of questions. A lot, yes. And he wants to see some reports and he wants to know what's going on specifically. And he's right? counting on me to prove you know, provide this. Yeah, but and you were able to deliver what he wanted because mm -hmm. you're able to say neutral. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm talking to him. I better be, not be fluffy because your tendency being a high eye visual is to paint fluffy pictures and have fun and tell jokes and stories. Completely opposite of what he wants. Now he appreciates some of that, mm -hmm. but not when it's down to business. No. Right. Yeah. So here's my question. Give me my damn answers. Now you could be cutesy if you want to. Correct. Right? But don't waste my time. He's exactly right. He didn't like even that. have to say that, but you don't need to have him say that because you're smart enough to recognize how he is. Uh -huh. And that's part of the reason that I think this solidified so well on that one. But it's, it's all the confidence and it's all the competence that comes out because you're working that niche. And his sister's opposite. Yep. How so? Very high energy, go, 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 you know, type of person. Which is more you naturally. Yes. So that's why you like to go out and have dinner with her because you guys bullshit the whole time and have a lot of fun and joke. We do. Which we totally, then you're, you can have a conversation with him, right? And then you're going to switch gears completely when you walk into the restaurant with her. Uh-huh. Right? And that's the fun part about realization. So the niche, the niche, the niche, and connection, connection, connection. Mm -hmm. I can't stress that enough. And you hear us kind of banging that drum nonstop, guys, because it is what will get you through when the market changes. When a recession comes, and I'll say the R word, right? Ooh, <laughs> right? When the recession comes, it makes sense to be able to sell pieces of property that cover themselves. Mm -hmm. True? True. And they're going to cover themselves even more because fewer people will go down to Mexico for vacations. They're going to drive down to Florida. So actually, we're going to see upticks in our revenue mm -hmm. um, when the rest of the market kind of takes a, a crap. But that's also the stories that you can tell that are true, mm -hmm. right, from the best of your knowledge to clients that are buying in the area saying, this is how you insulate yourself. Mm -hmm. Now, you're insulating yourself from a downturn in a market shift because you're so niched. If you start doing things more that we just talked about a couple of minutes mm -hmm. ago with your videos and the posts and all that stuff, there's no one's going to touch you in that town. They, they can't, but they could, but they won't. Right. right. And then so do market do what it will. It doesn't matter because you're going to be so firmly entrenched into that niche of that market. And you're the tribal leader of that town. And no one's going to go anywhere because they're going to see you everywhere. And they have it. And you don't need them all. And so you can attract and repel and be you. And if they don't like you, bye. Mm -hmm. Right. Go somewhere else. Have some fun. Oh. Or you can throttle it back and switch over the gears the way you know how to do that. So. Right. I'm very excited for you for your business. Well, thank you. Going forward on that one. So parting words um, to those who are watching that get a little bit of inspiration and thoughts for you. So what sh if you haven't done this yet, what should they do? How do you start? What's the first thing that somebody watching that wants to pull this off can do? Find your passion. I think the passion is a big thing because for me, I am going to stay in Indy Rocks Beach for the rest of my life. I'm not leaving the island. I'm not going anywhere. Uh, I enjoy the people I surround myself with right. um, and the involvement, the social life we have all together and yep. uh, every Sunday on the beach, hanging out with friends. So you got to find, you know, if it's hanging out in the suburbs and you know, in the brick homes in Tampa, and yeah. the lifestyle, the parties that way. And everyone's it's, passion is totally different. Yeah. You get to do what you want. Everybody likes their own things. 
and they do what they do. And goal in life, you know, what makes you happy? Like Gary says. What puts a big ass smile on your face? Mm -hmm. And for you, it's chilling out and relaxing and putting 30 grand in the bank a quarter. And that's, that supports your lifestyle. So good. So what I wanted to make sure happen for you guys watching is that we provide more tactical value to make sure that you can take action on the things that I know are going to insulate you when the market changes and are going to make you have a much easier life. Now your life is great because when you need to go show properties, you can hop in the golf cart and within five minutes, you can hit the whole town. Right. So you don't have to have 45 minutes of looking at Google maps and saying, Oh shit, I didn't, I missed my turn. Right. You yeah. don't even have to deal with that aspect. Yeah. You just know your town and that's what you do. And that's the luxury that you get to create when you build your business. Right. So, Oh, those of you sitting on the fence, get off. Right? Find your specialty. Find the specialty, find the niche, find your passion and do it. And um, hit us up and you can find Adrian. We'll kind of, we'll, we'll put her link on this post. You can reach out if you have any questions. And I've always reached out to me. Let me know, guys, what you thought. Give us a thumbs up. Give us a thumbs down. If you didn't like it, show give some comments. Share this with some friends. You Share it in your neighborhood. Yep. And guys, let us know you're doing it. And let us know how we can support you guys. The rising tide raises all boats. And that's what we're here to do. Power, educate, encourage guys. So do it, do it, do it. Adrian, thank you very much for taking hey, the time. Hey, thank you. Love it. <laughs> Thanks for watching, guys. See you soon. See ya.